Hey there, everybody. This is Mystic Fish, and welcome to episode 40 of our playthrough of Factorio, where we are building a mega base base camp. Last episode, we had a major milestone where we finished upgrading the base to be capable of doing somewhere north of 90 science per minute. That is going to be our terminal velocity of science research for our mega base base camp. And we also got a Spidertron going. Uh, and use that to clear out a few biter bases, which was pretty exciting. I think this episode, what we're going to do is build out a little army of Spidertrons. And I th these are really helpful tools for building a mega base. It means that we can build things remotely without, without having to be there, and especially with the use of the Spidertron remotes. And so last episode, we used it for clearing biter bases. We're going to develop this time around a group of Spidertrons with different purposes and build those out. So we're going to show how those work and what they do. I'm going to try a different video editing style this time around. So we're going to try to do some better voiceovers over different video segments and try to do a little more video editing to make some smoother transitions and faster storytelling. So let me know what you think of this style and we'll take it from there. So let's get started. Okay, our original iron outpost is completely out of ore at this time, so let's figure out a way that we can clean that up. Introducing the Algae Eater. What's an Algae Eater, you might ask? Well, if you've ever owned an aquarium, an Algae Eater is a particular type of fish that you buy to put in your fish tank, and it eats algae that grows on the bottom or sides of the tank and helps you keep your aquarium clean. Okay, we're going to have a Spidertron with repair packs, robots locked into the inventory, and that is it. Equipment-wise, we're going to have two Mark II RoboPorts, two fusion reactors, a pair of legs, and then six personal batteries Mark II for energy storage. And the batteries have a total capacity of 600 megajoules. Okay. We've got these two fusion reactors here. They generate 750 kilowatts each. So that is 1.5 megawatts put together. And one question we might have is how long will it take to charge the batteries if they are fully drained? So we can do a little math here. And I like to use this calculator mod, which is a great quality of life mod. Okay, so the two fusion reactors uh, put together, as we said, generate 1.5 megawatts of power. So to charge the batteries, we know we want to charge 600 megajoules total. We divide that by the 1.5 megawatts and that gives us 400 seconds. So it takes somewhere between six and seven minutes to fully recharge the Spidertron's battery. So we may have to rest it if we end up using it enough that we drain its batteries. Now let's talk about consumption. The big one are the RoboPorts, 3.5 megawatts when we're using the robots. We'll get to back to those in a second. But the exoskeleton legs are a lot cheaper, 200 kilowatts. Uh, or 0 0.2 megawatts. That our fusion reactors, remember, generate more than that. So they can keep up with the legs. But just for fun, let's calculate how long we could run around on the legs just with the batteries. So we've got 600 megajoules. We divide that by the 0 0.2 megawatts that the legs will consume, and that gives us 3,000 seconds, or somewhere around 50 minutes. Actually, that's exactly 50 minutes uh, where we could run around on the legs. Roboports are another matter, 3.5 megawatts each, so two of them make seven megawatts. So how long are the batteries gonna last here? Let's open the calculator again. Okay, we got 600 megajoules. We're gonna divide that by seven megawatts and we get 85 seconds. So somewhere just south of a minute and a half. So if we're intensively using the robots, we can only use it for this long before the Spartron's really gonna have to rest. Okay, let's talk logistics now. Obviously, we're going to need our construction robots to do the work of picking up trash, but we have a request for absolutely every item in the game pretty much set to zero, which means if we pick something up and then bring it back to the base here, the logistics robots will recycle it for us. Okay, let's take it for a spin. Let's use our remote to send the Spidertron on up here, and let's try to clean up this outpost. All right, we're going to make a copy of our clear-cut deconstruction planner and modify it for our purposes here. So 
If you recall, this deconstructs trees, rocks, and cliffs, but we're gonna change it from whitelist to blacklist, which makes it do the opposite. In other words, this will deconstruct anything that is not a tree, rock, or cliff, or everything artificial that we might have put down here. And this lets us follow the good camping etiquette of take nothing but photos, leave nothing but fingerprints. So uh, we can clean up after ourselves without grabbing extra trees and rocks and things. Let's get a good icon here for this thing. Uh, I would really like to use one of the asterisks from the circuit network, but I guess we'll f settle for using A here as a generic label. Put this on the hot bar. And then let's see if this works as we expect it to. So can we deconstruct trees with it? We cannot, good. Can we deconstruct stuff with it? Yes. Okay, that is working as I think we want it to. So let's take a look on the map view, zoomed out, and that means we can take this thing and deconstruct this entire chunk of stuff, just like this. Uh, let's see, this is probably a little too far because this is getting into some of that T intersection up top. So maybe we'll just come back this far, okay? Now, when working with remote Spiretrons, you have to get used to like zoomed in map view. And so, and move around with the Spidertron remote, which is takes a little getting used to because it's very easy to get used to the fact that, hey, if I'm looking at a zoomed in picture, then I am not in map view. And so sometimes I find that I am entering and exiting map view when I don't expect it when using the remote Spidertrons. At any rate, when we move this guy around, it will go ahead and pick up all of the things that we have now deconstructed. So this is working good. We are picking all our stuff up, bringing it back to be recycled at the base. So I'm gonna go ahead and run around, pick all this stuff up, and then we will uh, catch you on the flip side of that. Okay, we are just about done picking up all of the stuff, which we are now done with. Let's bring things back to base. I'm just gonna click right here in the middle of the base. And here comes the Spidertron. And we should see once this gets within range of our logistics network that logistics bots are going to come start emptying all the stuff out of this guy. And there we go, there's all logistics bots happily emptying things out for us. Uh, and this is great because this is gonna recycle all of that stuff, right? They're gonna take all of the equipment that we put down put it back in the storage boxes where they originally got it. And that way, when we have future builds, we'll refill future inventory using that rather than building new stuff. And if we take a look, we can see that things are draining out of the trash slots here. Nothing left in the trunk and the trash is empty. Okay, we have a Spidertron that will help us deconstruct things. How about a Spidertron that will help us build things? So I have a new Spidertron right here, and let's pull our algae eater up here. And we're gonna use this as a template. So I am going to shift right click and then shift left click on this Spidertron. And you can see we get a copy of the algae eaters configuration here. Same equipment, same trunk, same logistics. And that's useful because we can use it as a nice basis for customizing here. Now, since we're building stuff, I'm going to name this a dwarf gurami as a fish. The dwarf gurami is another popular aquarium fish. And one of the things that's interesting about it is that out in the wild, when it is reproducing, the male dwarf gurami will actually build a nest of bubbles to hold the fertilized eggs. And so yes, this is a fish that actually builds things in nature, which is the reason that I have named our builder Spidertron after it. Okay, let's get the logistics set up here. Now I'm going to reserve specific slots in the trunk for the specific materials that we want. And uh, we'll come over to the logistics side. Fortunately, every, all the requests are here since we copied them from the algae eater. And I'll just go ahead and add certain stacks worth of materials that I think we're gonna need. So we can get started with some of the train stuff here, adding in our signals, stations, rails, etc. 
uh, the nice thing here is because the rest of the logistics are set to zero, we can have the Spidertron have exactly in the trunk the things that we expect it to have when it comes back here to the main base. So it will clear out everything we're not carrying and pick up the new materials that it wants for its next set of building escapades. All right, we're gonna speed this up and just finish building out the logistics here. Okay, we've got the logistics and the trunk set up. As you can see, we are actually a little low on beacons because those are not showing up here. So I'm gonna go ahead and expand out the mall with a couple of things that we are otherwise a little slow to make. And then after that, we will get this thing hooked up and ready to go. Okay, we have this configured as we want inventory wise. So let's finish the setup. I'm gonna grab ourselves a Spidertron remote out of the mall. I'm gonna find it in the inventory. Left click on that Spidertron, and then we can put this remote on the hotbar if we rearrange a few things. And then this remote should be able to move this Spidertron around, which we can see that it does. So that all looks good. Let's hop in and take this thing for a spin. So one of the nice things here is that we can do a multi-stage journey by clicking and then shift clicking. And then we're gonna head down to this stone patch to set things up for the next Spidertron. Okay, we're down here at this stone patch, which has 2.7 million stone in it. And we're gonna turn this into landfill. Now landfill takes 20 stone each. So let's figure out how much landfill we can get out of this. Let's take our 2.7 million. Actually, you know what? Let's just round this up to 2.8 million. Uh, that's the amount of stone. We divide by 20 stone per landfill. That gives us 140,000 landfill. Divided by stacks of 100. That's 1,400 stacks. And then we divide by 48 stacks in a box. And so that tells us we're gonna need 30 storage chests for all of this landfill. We get our mining set up as per usual. We lay out some beaconed and moduled assembly machines so that we can keep up with the stone mining and turn that all into landfill as fast as we can mine it. And here a little guest starring our builder Spidertron friend here who can fill in for us when we are out of things in our inventory. We hook everything up with belts. And then we take our output belt and take all of that generated landfill and put it into logistic storage chests so that we can load it into various places as a result. Finally, we connect the power up here, get the mining going. We can see the stone flowing down the belts through the balancers. And uh, especially if we put some lights around our assemblers, we can actually see the landfill production starting and getting put into the storage boxes. So this is all set. This is going to drain this entire stone patch and turn it into landfill. The last step is to make sure we have logistics bots down here. Uh, and our builder Spidertron, the Dwarf Gurami, has just arrived back from a trip to the main base. We can put our own logistics bots in here. Uh, we'll turn off our personal logistics because we don't want the bots delivering us the landfill. That's going to go somewhere else. And we can grab the logistics bots that the Builder Spiretron just brought down to us and add those in as well. And so now this station is ready to deliver landfill to whoever needs it. Okay, back at the main base, we are finally ready for the next Spidertron. So let's go grab one out of the old mall here. Plunk that there. Let's copy and paste from the algae eater that gets our base logistics request set up. 
and this Spiretron we are going to call the Land Shark. It is going to be responsible for doing landfill for us. Okay, we give this guy a similar set of equipment to our other bot-based Spidertrons. So, a pair of legs, two fusion reactors, two Roboport Mark IIs, and then six batteries Mark II. And then, as far as the trunk and the logistics go, we pretty much want this guy completely filled with landfill. If you've ever done a lot of landfilling, you know when you need to do the landfill, you need a lot of it. So we are just gonna have this entire trunk filled with landfill and that is pretty much it. So we'll go ahead and mark slots for that in the trunk and then we'll set up the logistics request for it. Okay, the logistics request ends up being for 7,000 landfill, if you can believe that. That is quite a bit of landfill. And uh, let's see, we can go grab a Spidertron remote for this new land shark. We can go connect it up, stick it on the hot bar, and we'll move things around a little bit. And then we can go ahead and we can see the landfill is coming in here from what we have at the base, but we can go ahead and grab our remote and send it uh, down here to our landfill location to go fill up on landfill. Okay, we're finally gonna put this thing into action. So we are going to build a rail bridge here across this lake over here at the southeast corner of the main base. Uh, we have already set up some ghost landfill, which we can see the land shark is pretty happy to fill in for us. And we can tag team things here with the Dwarf Garami Builder Spidertron. So we can go ahead and grab our rail blueprint here. Plunk that down. The Builder Spidertron can plunk the rails down in for us. We can just move our way down the land bridge here. Get to the end, uh, grab ourselves some landfill, more landfill. Plunk some ghosts down, a little further down as we go. Come back up to where we are with the land shark. Grab its remote, come on down, fill in the bridge, rinse and repeat. Okay, we get down here to the end and the Builder Spidertron can finish things off for us. We can grab ourselves a T-junction and plug our bridge right into this pre-existing horizontal rail. And even though I was here for this, uh, my robots are off and this is what we like to be able to do, right? The Spidertrons here working in conjunction can actually do a bunch of stuff on their own, which means that we can really be multiple places at once. And that's really the attraction of having a sort of all of these special purpose Spidertrons put together. We can use them to build outposts. And then finally, we can string multiple Spidertrons with the same configuration together, as I've done here with the combat Spidertrons, which, by the way, I have renamed to be Lionfish. And that allows us to expand their general throughput, in this case for firepower. We can have the secondary Spidertrons follow the primary ones, so we can control them with one remote. Although in this case, with the combat, I'm actually driving it because that lets us use my lasers to help out with some of the attacking. We can do the same thing with the Builder Spidertrons as well that will help us build things faster by increasing the number of robots and obviously the inventory space that they have for carrying stuff. 
And then finally, we can put all of this together as a way to expand our territory. We can have the Builder Spidertron, the Dwarf Garami, come in and put rails in for us. And then we can set up an additional Builder Spidertron that works just like the Dwarf Garami, but which has the ingredients we need for doing our defenses. So that includes our perimeter depot station as well as the actual walls and defenses. And then as one final tip, we can take a look at our logistics here for our various bots and you know, as we look at the things that we want to have in inventory here, it'd be nice to have a lot of those things all piled up together. And so I've set up these buffer chests here that request all of the inventory that we want for the Spidertrons uh, so that when they come back to base, they can refuel and restock really quickly, uh, whether that is on rockets or for the combat Spidertrons or it's building materials for the other ones. And so there you go. Here we have our Spidertron army, or perhaps it's better to say a school of Spidertron fishes. Spiderfish? Not sure what we would call those, but at any rate, uh, we have now a bunch of different special purpose Spidertrons set up that we can use to do a bunch of different things remotely. We've got the algae eater that's set up to clean up things that we want to tear down. We have our general purpose uh, dwarf gurami builder Spidertron. We've got our defense specific builder Spidertron, which I named the Pufferfish, so that can help us build out the walls. And then we have a bunch of combat Spidertrons that are set up to go ahead and clear out biters for us. And then last but not least, we should go pay a visit and uh, look in on our friend here, the Land Shark, that is set up to uh, do all of our landfill needs as we go. And so with that, we are actually set up to be able to do just about anything we want to do from a mega base point of view. And I think this is gonna be the end of this series. So thanks for watching so far. Just as a recap, some of the things that we've done here are we have set ourselves up with a nice expandable base that started off with smelting uh, for red and green and black. We have this really long mall that we set up to get us started uh, where we actually were able to put all of the ingredients on just a handful of belts uh, to build out a pretty good mall uh, leading up into our red and green and black science and then we proceeded to do the same things with our other sciences so adding on more smelting as we go for the blue and the yellow and the purple science uh, not to mention the ingredients for our rocket silo and so on. Uh, we continued to just follow this general pattern of smelting followed by intermediates and running up into the science production. Uh, once we got bots, uh, we continued to follow that, but we were able to go to a completely bot-based building environment here and uh, including for the rocket silo up here. Uh, we showed as a nice little side diversion how to automate the production of fish so we can actually make as many Spirotrons as we want. And uh, we actually got things going with upgrading to red belts and upgrading to the steel smelters that uh, we can get just about over 90 signs per minute going out of our original base. Uh, we have a nice bot based mall to build all of the ingredients for things that we want. And more importantly, we have a nice little set of blueprints that we can that are grid aligned so that we can lay out connecting Robofort grids or adjust the power for them, as well as various rail segments that we can use. It turns out all we really needed were straight rails and T intersections as we go. Uh, and then a few for both straight walls and corner walls for our defense and we even had automated defenses, so we set up a way for us to deliver various materials to make sure that those defenses kept going. And so with that, we're gonna stop there. Uh, I think we now have everything in this space that we could use to begin the construction of 
a mega base from here. So there were some other things that I thought about building uh, and covering in the series, but uh, I think in many cases, what you would do next is gonna vary a lot on what kind of mega base that you're building. So you may have different needs. And so I think we're just gonna stop things here and take it from there. I hope you have enjoyed watching this series. And I strongly suspect, given that we've now got a nice mega base base camp, that I may do a couple of base camps or not base camp series, we've already done that. No, mega base series where we design a few different types of mega bases. So stay tuned for that. And as always, thanks for watching. We'll see you next time. And until then, bye.